All right, guys, I figured I'd just kind of show you my uh, process I use for cleaning games, whether these be games I'm getting from a customer to clean up or whatever, or ones that are for my collection. I go ahead and even if they look pretty good, which all of these really seem to, let's see, I'm not sure how well the camera is picking that up, but those pens look pretty clean. And this overall, you can tell this cartridge has not been played a whole lot. Perhaps a testament to the quality of the game. Or just maybe not bad quality, but I mean, why would you play it on Nintendo 64 instead of PC? I mean, honestly. So, your game bit. This is the same on N64, Super Nintendo, NES. Etc. I got this nice new blue work mat that all the cool kids have now too. So it's got all the little compartments and such. I like these little magnetic trays they have as well for the screws. So that's nice. So that comes right off. And then we've got two Phillips screws on the side here. This is only on uh, N64 as the only shielded cartridge games, at least Nintendo made. Uh, Sega definitely, I don't know about Sega, maybe the Sega Saturn RAM carts might have it too. I think as far as cartridge games goes, um, I think it's mostly going to be the N64 ones are going to be going on with shielding. But. So you take that off, no big deal, set it aside. And you can see this is the most basic board revision here for Nintendo 64. It's got the lockout chip and the ROM chip, and yeah, as I suspected, these are absolutely, pins are absolutely immaculate. I could clean them, but um, uh, I don't really see them getting much cleaner than that, so. Um, but for demonstration purposes, Q-tip. 70% uh, rubbing alcohol, 70% or higher will work. For light cleaning, you know, obviously this one is a candidate for that. It really doesn't need a whole lot, you know, just a little rub it down real quick. And some whatever dust or corrosion off of there, you see the little, um, the amount of flux left over on any of these given cartridge style games seems to vary a whole lot. Um, some games is almost perfectly clean, like the, the, the wash cycle they did afterwards, you know, the alcohol bath or whatever, just absolutely got almost every conceivable drip off. And then other times, they actually have quite a lot left over. And those seem to usually be the games that have you know, the bigger PCBs and um, uh, maybe some uh, surface mount soldered stuff that, you know, kind of they flood the board with a little more flex. Um, so even a game that hasn't been mistreated, you know, the pins being blown on and handled by greasy pizza fingers and all that stuff. Um, even, even a immaculately maintained game, you know, or, or, or from the, again, the cleanest owner or whatever can still somehow get really dirty cartridge pins. And I, that seemed to perplex me quite a bit um, because there seemed to, you know, there's some cartridges that look absolutely immaculate on the outside, but then the pins are just horrendous, you know, and, and I figured out that over time, if there's enough, enough excess flux on the board, most games are usually stored in their kind of upright factory position, or for sure they're that way when they're playing, and especially when they're playing and getting warm a little bit. So I figured out that over time that whatever residual flux kind of all concentrates itself down at the lowest point there. So um, something to be said for that if you're taking the games apart to clean them anyways, kind of check the, the flux content here and it might be worth giving it kind of another bath and getting the majority of it off so the cleaning you do this time can, as long as you're putting it in a clean console every time, it should stay clean. So anyways, that's the, um, that's going to be it for that one. So, again, same thing, we just pop that back in. Um, there is a little trick to these. This looks kind of the same, but it definitely only goes in one way. Um, what I've, uh, the trick I've used to remember it cause it really doesn't, isn't too obvious. You see there's kind of a little chip out of this side and no chip out of that side on this edge here. You see that little, little doodad. How I remember it is that, that 
the side with the chip lines up with the side with the chips. And then on N64 cartridges, at least, when you have it face down, the chips are facing you. If you tried to put that in, it wouldn't just fall in like that. It can't go, nothing, none of that stuff can go in backwards, so it won't, it just won't fit. So you'd have to really force something to make that happen. So then just clips right back in place, put the screws back on it, and boom, easy. I'll show you one uh, one other technique that I like to use for a, a cartridge, especially that's actually got some dirt to it. Okay, so now we got old SimCity 2000 out of the way. We'll take a look at some of these other ones. Uh, this one's a game called Putty World, this bottom left here. We'll take that one apart. And do it, do it a little cleaning and I'll see if there's anything interesting about the circuit board. There's uh, quite a few different revisions of uh, Super Nintendo game cartridge PCBs. And it's kind of interesting to see which games have extra hardware, which ones don't. Um, a lot of times that, that can be kind of unexpected. A game that you would think uh, is, is, again, kind of advanced for what it is. You might think that it has a uh, has extra hardware, and you open it up, and it's just one of these, the most basic board. Uh, I don't think this game is in that category. I'm pretty sure when playing this, uh, you'd be fully convinced that it was a one of the more basic games you can see this one is not not horrible but it's definitely got some some pretty good grit to it inside especially so there's a couple options for this uh, what I used to always do was uh, the 70% uh, first kind of prime it uh, get off of what surface dirt you can with that and then Brasso on the q-tip and then kind of polish up the pins with that a little bit and then uh, you always make sure to get another really good alcohol rinse after that because you don't want to leave any of the brasso on there so that can be potentially corrosive so um, i'll do that now i'll start with a start with an alcohol swab and then i will do the other technique which i have come to not necessarily prefer because it's not the right option for every circumstance but it's a good a good solution uh, kind of for a specific kind of heavy dirt if you will so get that spot off of there yeah this is one of those cartridges you can see has a fair amount of kind of flux on the board but actually not really it's all kind of made its way down to here already to this line and this line is kind of another place where, where the pcb sticks through it's kind of where the flux will stop sometimes. You do that, get kind of wet. And then this is a fiberglass pen. You extend it out. It, sure enough, has little fiberglass. But anyways, this is, again, it's kind of a light abrasive action. Not too much. Yeah, this one definitely has uh, a lot of flux on the pins. Not much flux is left on the board, but you can kind of feel when it's flux that's uh, gumming up your gumming up your works there. Well, anyways, that was a disaster. Um, Hoopa duped my fiberglass pen pretty good. I think I did finally. Yeah, it's still like not as nice as it was though. It's kind of like lost its clean edge, but oh well sometimes it happens so on um, this one basically you don't want to get the fiberglass pen involved when there's a lot of flux is kind of what I've learned uh, when you if you determine that it is kind of again when the dirt on the pins is kind of sticky like that you want to uh, you're gonna want to go for this for the brass over out it kind of cuts through the flux a little better um, you can kind of pretty much that's why I like to do the alcohol swab test first is it kind of tells you um, what the nature of the grime on the pins is. This one's very sticky. So you can see there's a lot of stuff coming off of there. And sometimes you'll have to, some of these will clean up real easy, but uh, if it's flux or, or you know, kind of something else sticky, 
got some kind of heavy corrosion. You might have to do this a couple times and you get it like, perfectly clean and then a fresh coat of Brasso. And this one looks like it's coming around pretty nice with just one round though. This side's pretty gritty. Toss that one. Get a new one. But this is not really that bad either by standards. This is, uh, again, this is a case of not a, uh, not belonging to a bunch of greasy kids or something like that. It was, the owner was pretty, pretty, you know, respectable, whatever, you know what I mean? Not an adult or a respectful kid that isn't, was not grubbing everything out. It, uh, is just the, like I was talking about before, just the flex that has made its way down to the pins over time. So I'm betting with a bit of alcohol that will that will be finished off real nice. Looking pretty good. You can kind of dry it off with the unused side. That'll tell you if you have any leftover residual. As you can see, that's looking pretty nice. We'll clean the residual off of this side. Little spot there. Polish it up. Yeah, very nice. And call that good. Set that aside. Hopefully not. Oof. Yeah. And be careful with the magnetic tray. That's the downside. You could maybe put something sensitive in the wrong spot if you weren't being careful. I like to go around the inside of the cartridge here too, especially in this down this slot. You want to be careful if you're using anything stronger than 70% here. The type of plastics that game consoles and cartridges are made out of, in my experience, have been pretty resistant to alcohol. You know, it hasn't caused any major damage or cracks or discoloration or anything, but um, the stronger the alcohol, the more likely you are to have a problem. So just word to the wise there. Some decent dirtiness. If you do not have a luxurious mat on Super Fam cartridges, you have a kind of a nice place to store the screws in there while you're working on it. Yeah, and then same thing, a little bit, of, a little bit of smut in there. So we'll get after it. That's interesting, that almost looks like I have a 3D printed texture. I'm sure it was molded plastic back in those times, but interesting that it has that kind of similar texture. And then you kind of want to pay extra attention to like right here this position and then the, the opposite on the other side that's what's actually rubbing up against the PCB so if you had a little I don't know, just a little piece of junk in there that was slightly abrasive over time it might might wear, you know, wear out a trace or something so and it's those little details especially when you've taken something apart anyways you might as well take the extra few seconds just to make sure something like that doesn't cause trouble down the road 
So that's that one. Um, so that's pretty much it. I will take the rest of these apart if there's uh, any of them that have any interesting circuit boards, any interesting hardware other than just the basic one. I'll show that real quick. But uh, other than that, this that could be it. So check out. Well, Fatal Fury's got the the double double ROM size here. That particular revision, nothing too special though. That's to be expected. That's a you know arcade port, so usually uh, arcade fighting games. I'd say most of the arcade fighting game ports are probably gonna have at least this much hardware on it. Nothing too special. Let's see where they where they snapped off. Yeah, they, these uh, they have like breakpoints here, so they they must manufacture these like must have manufactured them in kind of a sheet or something. They have two breakaway points here and one here. Yeah, four total, or I mean, I'm counting this one as one. That's kind of interesting. It's not. You know, it's obviously just snaps off. So again, yeah, yeah, this one needs. Need some attention. This one feels a little drier. Maybe it's not flex. Might try the fiberglass pan on that one, but. Raise on. Cheap. Yeah, this has got the triple triple ROM and a map chip, mapper, and a save battery. Everything. Probably the most advanced one for that year. Choop. Oh, you checked it? Yeah. Chip, you just knew. Yeah, I think that's the same chip that's in the regular controller. These nice, nice micro switches in there. Yeah, and they've <clears throat> modified the L button a little bit. Shit.
this one. Is that? You hear that? What? You see the microwave beep? No, that was my camera. Oh. Boop. Like, that's the same sound I made before. It didn't work last time. <laughs> that was the death beep last time. <laughs>